Okay guys, so uh, Aaron Shop Fix Academy here. I wanted to just tell everybody about some stuff that I've been working on with marketing. A lot of people out there have been asking me, Aaron, how do I do direct mail? How do I make my marketing work? How do I get my stuff to come together and actually process for me? So I feel like um, there's a lot of questions out there and a lot of misunderstandings and those need to be answered and there's a way to do that and it's just to break it down and show it to you. Now, a lot of people won't do this. A lot of training companies won't do this because they don't have their own shops. They don't have a way to bounce this information back and forth. But this is something that I believe in. This is something that I think um, every shop owner should know. And it's just the basics of how marketing works, whether it be direct mail, whether it be an email you're sending out, a radio ad that you may be doing, a TV commercial, um, uh, Google AdWords, website, you name it. This is how you work your business. This is how you work your shops. Um, this is how you work your marketing plan over so that it, produce, it produces for you an actual result that's going to make your company work. So um, they make customers come in and buy. A lot of customers, they run around uh, uh, looking for someone to provide them with service for something they think they need, not knowing what they actually need. And I think the big misunderstanding out there is how you go about this and how you make this work. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of how these direct mails uh, can work and how you can do things differently. So um, we've had different renditions of different ads, and uh, what, I'll, what I'll do right now is I'll stick to um, my Eurofix ad. So if we've got a Eurofix flyer like this, and I have this flyer come in, this is how it started. You can see the small print, we got our points here, we got the uh, we'll care for your vehicle and use, our, byline, our headline, and then we've got our byline down here, all the different brands we work on. We've got the brand of our company, and then we've got the supporting information here. This then evolves to this. Once it evolves to this, it looks totally different. You know, same blue, but it just keeps getting more and more consistent. This now has evolved from an Audi on the front to a Mercedes and a BMW. Then once we evolve from a Mercedes and BMW to whatever cars that, work, that we work on our location, we then add our locations across the bottom of the, of the card here. Also, the maps on the back of the location, super important. Make sure this focuses. You've got to have these maps in the back. This is how the customer is going to find you. So let's just start from the beginning. This headline. The headline is the most important part. Next is really the photos. The photos are huge. Then as well, on top of that, guys, you've got to make sure it makes sense. So here's how marketing works. I don't care if it's an email. I don't care if it's your website. I don't care wherever you're going. This is how it works. You have to have a headline that makes a promise, and then on that promise, you have to give the supporting information, which is your byline, and after that, you have to provide the information that supports the byline. So they basically got to look at the headline and go, baloney, that's not going to happen. Then they got to look at the byline and go, baloney, no way. Then they got to read the paragraph and go, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe this works. And if you break it down like this, then what ends up happening is, it actually causes them to flow all the way down and read the entire card from top to bottom. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody to read the whole card. You don't want them just to glance at it and toss it in the mail. Because remember, the wife may check the mail and the husband may handle the car repair or the husband may check the mail and the wife may handle the car repair. Next, you flip over the card. If you look at this card, we've got a picture of a car. We've got a free AC inspection. We've got our oil change offers. And we know what location it went to, what RO number. We wrote all this down based on how they came to our shop. But this is not what I like. We tested this card out doing a more modern looking coupon. And guess what? We went back to this one with a more simple coupon that they could cut out and it worked better. And then I don't have one here in front of me. Here's my auto fix flyer. We went back to just these here and you can't see up close, but they perforate on the edge. It looked like an actual coupon. And the ones that look like a coupon actually end up performing better as well. This is where it gets interesting. If you notice, right here on this one, I've got the map, I've got the $60 off, I know it's probably backwards being live, and I got a $44.97 oil change on all European brands, which cost me a fortune on an Audi A8 or a 911. But I would rather have the chance to quote $2,000 in brakes on an A8 and give up a little bit on an oil change than not have the chance at all. My latest rendition, which I don't have sitting here with me, I don't have a picture of this lift of this guy on a car. Instead, what I have is a free battery check or check engine light check. Very simple. Here's how you want to do your direct mail. Here's how you want to do your website. This is how you want to do uh, your email you're sending out or any marketing you're doing that ever has an offer. I've got two solid offers that I know drive car count, and then I have my experiment in the middle. 
I don't have it on this one, but most of the time I'll have an experimental offer here. Why do I care about this? Remember these that were sitting here? These are from the AutoFix ads. This is a bonus savings, 10, 20, what, $50 off. I've even gone up to 100 experimenting. This is in here, 19 and $35 off. It's very important to me when I see a customer cut a coupon out. You may go, well, yeah, Aaron, it's smaller than you No, 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 no. See, if they cut this coupon out, this tells me it's not just because they valued this coupon, but they valued the rest of the freaking card so much they wanted to keep it. They don't know they're on a mailing list that's going to send them this card every month. They don't know they're getting this every other day. All they know is, okay, I got $60, I've got $44, or here I got $19, I've got $35, or on this one I got $10, $20, $50. They're just like you and me. If I get an offer for Windows, I don't know that I'm going to get another one in four weeks for my house or a new one for my driveway or whatever it may be. That's how you have to think about it for your business. For your business, you've got to understand that they don't know how many times you're going to get this. So let's stop and think for a second. If I get a cutout, that means they like the rest of the card. That means it's doing well. So I want to see this cutout. And I want to see that they're saving the other part because they see it has value. When I did this style, the more modern, where I broke it up and I just had this little white line between it, we didn't get near the response. No one was cutting these out. And we actually talked to customers later and asked them. They felt it was confusing. People are programmed for coupons to be perforated. It's just, that's how it is. So we went to this nice clean block style. And now we even have a coupon here in this spot. And this is always rotating. We're always trying a different coupon. We always have an oil change. We try different gift certificate amounts. And then we try different coupons all the time testing. We run our test typically two months, so 60 days, before we go on to the next one. And then on top of that, you saw where I went from this ad to this ad. Now it's good to have multiple cars in the front, especially for whatever works for your store. But let's say that your store does a ton of Nissans and uh, Toyotas. This was one we tried where we blocked off the Toyota logo and we just screwed around with it to see if it was in front of a Prius, if it would work. Didn't work. People don't even like to see the side of a car. It's got to be the nose of a car. Like the Audi here, it's got to be the nose. If it's the, if it's the side of a card, people won't do it. I know you guys have heard of the reticular activating system. That's the part of your brain that when you buy a new Suburban, you start noticing new white Suburbans on every corner just like yours. But before you never noticed them and they were always there, it's because your brain blocks that stuff out. Same thing with these cards. So when it comes down to a direct mail piece, and you're trying to figure out, well, Aaron, direct mail doesn't work. There's a few things you got to know. And, this, and I do a ton of direct mail for all six of my stores. I have my direct mail go out like this. I want to mail it in a sit. How many times do you hit the same postal routes or are they always the same? Thanks, Jason. I'll hit that question in just a second. Whenever I, whenever I get these sent out, I send someone a direct mail piece three times before I ever expect them to show back up at my shop. Three times. So that means if I mail this to Bob Smith, he's going to get this three times in a freaking row before he's ever going to call me. Then if he calls me, it's my job to get him to show up at my shop by answering the phone correctly. And this is the same with emails. This is the same with a radio commercial, a TV commercial. Over and over and over. Just like right now, if you saw a commercial for a dentist, you're not going to remember the name and go, oh crap, I'm going to go run to the dentist. You're not going to do that. Because we think about auto repair. We don't think about dentistry. And dentists don't think about auto repair. And a guy selling furniture doesn't think about auto repair or dentistry. We just, it's a fleeting moment. So i got to have something that catches their eye. A lot of you, you already work on a ton of Nissans or a ton of Cadillacs. Go open up your average ticket and your car count by make in your system right now. Go pull it up with Mitchell, RL Rider, Shopper, Protractor, whatever it is you're using. And if you go, holy crap, I didn't know I do a ton of Fords. Put a freaking Ford in the front of this. Why? Because Fords are naturally coming to your shop. That means probably your Ford dealer sucks. And if your Ford dealer sucks, that means there's other people that are unhappy. And that means if they are sitting here thinking that that shop sucks, then they think at that moment, hey, there's a way I can go chase this guy down and get this customer to show up at my shop. So if that's what they're thinking, then what they have to say to themselves is, oh crap, how do I get this guy to show up at my shop? I'm going to go throw some gas in this fire. So I'm going to put a Ford and then I find out the next one's maybe, uh, I don't know, Honda. I've got a sucky Honda dealer. I'm going to go take the Honda and I'm going to take that Honda and I'm going to put it right over here next to this Ford. And then I'm going to get more Fords and more Hondas. And you may say, Aaron, I already do a lot of Hondas. I already do a lot of Fords. I don't want more. Guys, that might be what your market needs. Listen to the market. Your market's already telling you what it needs by looking at that report by make in your system that every software out there tells you. 
And you can say, crap, I do a ton of Audis, I do a ton of Volkswagens, I do a ton of Fords. And on that decision, you can run out and you can throw some gas in that fire and make it grow even bigger. Then on top of that, remember, we got the buy, we got the headline, which is supported by the byline, which is supported then by the paragraph below. And you got your promise points. Your promise points better be different. They can't just be, and this is me in the beginning, we changed ours. Before it was the 100% customer satisfaction. And that's just the, I use Mudlick Mail, and that's just the basic thing they throw on there. I don't like it. It sucks. It's just average. I put on here stuff like we hunt down and hire the absolute best ASC certified technicians we can find. You know, something just crazy. Nobody else is going to put on there. Nationwide, three year, 36,000 mile warranty. Uh, the, no, the free, no wrench, free inspection. Uh, quality control program programmed on every, or performed on every single car, whatever it is. I do corny photos of myself. How dumb does that look? Little headshot. The newest one? I've got, I'm, and, I, and if you're a member of our, our uh, if shop fix, we test this. We're always testing. You get this stuff for free, by the way. So uh, basically our program is free if you sign up because it ends up paying for itself. We make these things actually work when a lot of people say they're dead. I'm now doing a trust agent test. Think about what are trust agents? What if you did a picture of yourself with a school teacher? A picture of yourself with a fireman? A picture of yourself with uh, um, a lawyer? No. Uh, a doctor? Yes. A police officer, sadly it should be yes, but right now, no. So what are trust factors? Another one's your kids, uh, your grandmother. My mother's the one I just did. So I shot a picture of one with me, one with my mom, little bubbles above my head, and we're goofing off saying stupid stuff. I'm doing a funny commercial or funny pose with my guns out, you know. We're goofing off. Figure out what it is for you and get that trust factor on there. Now, for me right now, I'm just doing myself. I've been on these for years. Um, I went off of them for a long time trying to brand just Eurofix, and I'm going back to this because I'm really, I've got my face everywhere at every one of my locations. I can, I can represent myself everywhere like I'm everywhere, even though I'm not. You need to do a corny picture, guys. If you go, why are corny advertisements at this furniture store? Why are they always doing these dumb ones for this mattress? Because they work. Corny sells. As sad as it is, it sells. Sophisticated marketing, honestly, usually never does. The cornier and the more embarrassed you feel, it's probably going to do awesome. Um, you may go, why are you doing dollars off, not percentages? Every time I do a 10 or 15% off, no response. I've tested it. If I do the same one on a card where I have three, and this is the beauty of having three offers every time. If I do a dollar amount, a percentage amount, and then a dollar amount for an oil change, what will happen is the oil change always performs. And then the dollar amount gift certificate versus the dollar amount percentage off won't perform. And what I'll find is they'll ignore that one and they'll always bring me the dollar amount that's just a clean dollar amount. People can't do hard math in their head. I have to, I have to tell this to people that are hiring technicians with complicated pay plans. The simplest pay plan is always the best. You want an employee to figure out how to manipulate their pay plan. I like the 10, 20, 50. I also do a 20, 50, 70, or 75 and a 20, 50, 100. And I like doing a minimum threshold amounts because I will give away 100 bucks on a $200 sub job like... Um, I don't know, a flush or, you know, I don't know, it doesn't matter, $200 something on a car, a thermostat, and then if I can get full price on a brake job, it's worth it. A new customer costs more than $200 most of the time. You may say, Aaron, why are oil changes so cheap? $19 for conventional and $35 for synthetic. Very, very simple. Aaron, I don't want to do a discount shop. Very simple. I can address all that. I take something that's already been commoditized. Is that a word? Yeah, we'll just say it is. Okay. Well, I take that thing and I run with it and I just say, I'm going to commoditize the crap out of it. And so I'll run around and I'll go get an oil change at all my competitors in the town. If I'm looking at buying a store and I'll get an oil change at all five or six of those guys and I'll step back and go, well, holy crap, this guy's $80, this one's 60 this one's 50 If I can always put this out and everybody knows I'm the $45, I'm the cheapest, who are they going to go to? They're already losing money on other, all these other jobs. The cheapest thing to lose money on is an oil change. I don't care. I get them to come to my shop for the oil change. And then I run with it, and I, I, I then sell everything else full price. I'm 99% sure I'm more expensive than everybody that's even watching this and will watch this over the next couple of weeks. I'm, we're, we're high, but I have no problem with being high. I'll give away this. I'll get them in the door. It's very, very simple. And somebody might say, well, Aaron, why would I want to give away this one job? Well, you don't know the value of a customer. If you're willing to give away $60 profit on one job, a thermostat, for example, and you go, Aaron... I barely broke it. I made a 35% gross profit. Well, let's say it's a 40% gross profit. You have no net profit. None of that 20%, right? Who the hell cares? Who cares? 
the customers in my bay. Now I can sell them a $2,000 job, a $3,000 job, $5,000 job, and get them to come back. We spend so much freaking marketing trying to get customers to come to our store. Then when they're standing there and they're ready to spend money, we get hung up on $40 or $60. I'm not a discount shop. That's your ego talking and not your freaking wallet. Everybody responds to coupons. And the ones that don't respond to value, that's awesome. Guess what? They see, oh, dang, that's a good value. And they still come. And guess what? They only use the map and they leave the card in the freaking passenger seat. So don't get hung up on this. And don't get into all this, I can't discount. My shop doesn't do discounts. We Our reputation's on disc. Good for you. I would rather my reputation be I'm the best freaking shop. My reputation is they're high, but they can fix anything. I mean, who cares? This customer, to get them to actually call you, you're going to mail out $2,000 of these flyers, and if you get 10 to call you, brand new customers, out of that 10, it's costing you 200 bucks a pop. If you don't answer that freaking phone right and get that customer to show up, it's a big goose egg. Then when the service advisor finally gets them to show up and they're actually in your shop and the car's in your bay, and then you get hung up, oh crap, I had to give away $60. Who the hell cares? Now you've got a customer. Stop trying to think about this like this. So many shop owners, sorry, I'm getting fired up. So many shop owners sit here and they think, they say to themselves, if I can just get the customer to show up, and then once they're in my, in, in my, in my shop, I'll sell them something, and all they think about is, how in the world can I give a coupon? How in the world can I get a customer so I can make a sale? That's not the goal. You need to make a sale to get a freaking customer. That's the goal. Get those two reversed in your mind. Because if I can give away $60 so that someone comes back to me over and over and over and over, is it not worth it? Because the first time I paid $200 for them to call, they only got an oil change and they left. They came back three times in a row. And each time they came back in a row, they got an oil change and then they left. And finally at the nine month mark, if they came every three months, they finally spent uh, some money. Here's the problem with that. Out of those... I'll have to do three of those customers that come three times to finally find one that sticks that will spend ten grand a year. So why in the world would I be worried about sixty dollars? I got a guy in my bay that needs two grand worth of work. I'll give him six, I'll give him two hundred dollars off the first repair, and I'll do the rest at full price. You gotta learn to compartmentalize this in your head. Work these things. These things are levers that you can make money with. Stop getting hung up on giving away offers and start trying to figure out how to get more work. If that car's in your bay and you gave away 60 bucks, you still paid all your overhead, you still paid your rent, you still paid electric, you still paid for everything else. But what if you didn't? What if they just came in and they just did the oil change and they leave? Well, here they just did the oil change and left. They didn't do anything else. Well, I still had to pay rent on the car. I still had to pay the electric bill on the car. I still had to, and you may go electric bill. Yeah, these lights that are on right now, somebody had to pay for them. You still had to go pay for the parking lot. You paid rent on the building, insurance on the building. You had to pay for all that crap. And each car that comes through your shop gets assigned a certain amount of overhead. The longer it stays in your shop, the more overhead gets assigned to it. you got to turn those cars. It's very, very simple. That maximizes profit. So stop and think about this long term. Long term, like way out in the future. If I have to get three customers to get one to stick and then... Out of the three customers that I get one to stick, they had to come three times in a row before they finally started spending big money. It makes you stop and think about that customer you piss off and you don't want to give them back their $500, doesn't it? It cost you $200 to get a guy to call. He came three times. You lost another $10 in each oil change. That's what? Uh, $230. And then you had to do three of those to get one customer to stick. So that's $690 to get one customer to stay. And some shops are up as high as $800. But we're too, I mean, we're too prideful. We're ready to blow them out because we don't believe in discounts. Oh my gosh. The, the customer that doesn't believe in discounts just won't use it. I don't ever do coupons, but I still go to the grocery store and they do coupons on everything. So think about this stuff, guys. It makes a lot of sense. I want to do this free video because there's so many guys that are asking me for it. So many guys that want to understand it. They want to know where this stuff goes. So take these things. Figure them out, learn them. I mean, I just scratched the surface on what we teach on this stuff. Figure this stuff out, go for it. And at that point, you can make adjustments. And for Jason, uh, I'll hit the same route. I'll keep testing the route. I'll get a penetration report from Mudlick. I do not do EDDM just for that freaking reason alone because you waste too much. When I see a route that drops below 2%, I cut it. 
Other than that, I then stick with that route, and if I see it go below 2%, I crank it back up, and I get it above 2%. Hi, Adam, I see you there. He's waving over and over and over. So make sure you get this thing above 2%. If no one's teaching you this, they're not teaching you how to market it. Once you get it above 2%, you get a route, and you cannot make that decision off of one mailing. You need at least three mailings to make sure you're getting above 2%. Once you know you're above 2%, rock with it, run, make that money. And the other ones that are 1.7, 1.8, you can maybe fudge it. 1.5 and below, for sure, cut it. Don't mail to that route. Move on, get a customer in there that's going to make you some money. Mail to the right routes. All right, guys, I'm tired. I'm going to get my kids some pizza and eat dinner. It's almost 7 o'clock here. I got to go. See ya.